Hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, title's there. I'm Ben. Um, to start with, uh, I am not a archiver like pretty much everyone else in this room, or not even related to archiving. I'm just a rogue archiver. I just archive. I just have this weird passion for archiving this particular thing. Uh, generally speaking, I just do systems engineering in the day. Um, and now, after watching the previous speaker, I realize I have definitely no idea what I'm doing. Um, so, uh, I'll start with how I got into this. Uh, it's all good things start with a weird Wikipedia binge, uh, for which then I hit lost television broadcasts, uh, which I thought was fascinating um, and sad. Uh, but also, what I thought was equally fascinating is the UK doesn't even just have like a section, but has a whole separate page for it, um, which is a little bit embarrassing. Um, and so I did some more look into it, asked some friends who happened to work at the BBC, and they said, oh, yeah, we have this thing called Redux, um, which helps some of that. Um, this is the best publicly accessible image you can find of Redux. Um, I'm sure someone broke their NDA by doing that. Um, but yeah. Uh, but anyway, so you may just say, like, oh, it's fine, the BBC's got archives. But also at the same time, the BBC had archives but lost them, so I don't really trust them for that anymore. Um, so... <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, we have, I was thinking, right, like, so how hard would it be to just get like one of those really cheap $5 DAB sticks and just dump them directly to disk? Um, so I did, well, I, I started that idea. Uh, I bought some old piece of telco kit, ripped everything out and thought, uh, and put drives in it. Uh, you can see the error in this image straight away, being that uh, I thought the drives would go in sideloaded, with inbound, um, but actually the, the telco rack was not quite enough for that. Um, so that was a big mistake. Uh, straight out, so I just had this thing was just sitting on my desk with drives inwards. That was a mistake. Um, then I moved on to like making this like one new server thing uh, just to do the job. And actually, to be fair, this worked. This acted as my monitor stand for a whole you know year and a half, not even a year, a few months. It was my monitor stand, um, and actually this this worked. Um, so the the storage space went up. And my initial intentions was to basically only have this as a rolling archive, so hold like 500 megabytes, uh, sorry 500 gigabytes of uh, content and delete the old stuff. Um, but then I realized, like, this space is kind of cheap, and we could just store it forever. Um, and also, like, so the BBC does, most of the content the BBC plays uh, is, like, at night when I'm asleep. Um, and also, uh, I am super late to the game and will always miss shows before the iPlayer threshold. Uh, so anyway, this is what the current setup looks like today, um, which looks a bit extreme. Uh, so there's just, yep, so you, I got a friend, well, I have a HP microserver NAS, and a friend donated his older NAS to me for more disk slots. Um, so this is what the current space usage goes at, um, which is doubled, of course, for RAID 1. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, bit expensive. 12 terabyte drives are kind of regretful. Um, but that's just the cost of doing, having low amounts of SATA ports. Um, this information is fed through uh, a pair of adhesive aerials, which are fantastic and the best eBay solution you can buy, uh, because my building's antenna sol solution just doesn't work. Um, just the port just doesn't have anything in it, which is weird. Um, this isn't just, it's not just in the UK. I actually also sent a couple of uh, things out to other friends in other countries. Um, this is the setup in the Netherlands, um, supported by uh, some gaffer tape holding the aerial in place, um, because this friend happens to live in like a concrete bunker effectively. Uh, so like there's only one particular place in this room where signal will be get. Um, also tried to make the package on the first run as suspicious as possible, just tried to wrap it in to see if it would get intercepted by Dutch customs. It didn't, very sad. Um, so, uh, also I have a tuner in the US uh, for Hot 97, which actually technically isn't DAB because the Americans have kind of discovered digital radio, but I kind of did it wrong. Um, more of that later. Um, and I do also ha have one in Australia too, but the person who's hosting it for me never sent me a photo of it. Um, so, and it receives Australian signal, so I assume it's in Australia. Um, I just don't know, I just have no proof. Um, so this is what the bit rates come out to. Uh, you'll notice that primarily all the BBC channels are MPEG-2 um, because I guess legacy reasons. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds kind of crap even at the highest bit rates, uh, which is really sad. Uh, AAC sounds actually pretty decent even though the bit rates are quite low. Um, actually, sometimes things like Hot 97 can sound way better than Radio 1 despite it being like three times the bit rate. Um, yeah. Sad. Anyway, te <laughs> tech overview. So, um, I distributed everything into like critical paths. Um, so some things are more important than the others when you're building a system like this. For example, uh, recording is a very important part because if you accidentally take down your recording bit for a bit moment, you have lost the content. You are not getting it back because the airwaves don't repeat themselves, uh, or at least they really shouldn't. Um, so the path works like this. Uh, for the UK, I use the actual TV simulcast, so I'm actually using DVB um, and just using a nice fairly reliable piece of software called Moomoo DVB, a small program called BStreamer just to dump it onto disk. Later on, some scripts move it to the older NAS. Um, and yeah, works pretty well. 
Uh, this is uh, 176 lines of code, and it pretty much never gone wrong, um, which is nice. For the foreign tuners, um, I have semi-homemade decoders for DAB plus and NRC5, which is the weird America we tried to do DAB but discovered it was easier just to keep it on FM uh, standard. Um, BAF buffered by RAM to ensure that if my home has a power outage, uh, these tuners can buffer correctly. Um, and that later gets sunk onto disks as well. Uh, another high priority thing is tagging. Um, tagging, metadata tagging is really useful in this system uh, because if you want to actually find tracks or find shows, um, you know, not very useful if you can't find it. Um, so there's two places the information comes from, EPG decoding, which is thankfully in DVB very easy, um, and dynamic lo label decoding, which nearly killed me in trying to figure out how that spec works uh, because there is no information about it and you have to start reverse engineering r random files. Um, and also the now playing information on various of the station's websites, which uh, actually surprisingly uh, still work even if, you, even if they don't work on, even if the BBC's presentation of that API doesn't exist anymore, the BBC is somehow keeping the APIs that I use online, which is really helpful. So thank you for not taking out those APIs. Um, this system is called BTagger. Uh, also, it's a very small amount of code and hasn't really gone wrong that much. Uh, and if it does, I save the original uh, JSON payload files in case I need to go back and do things. Um, other low priorities, just playback in general. All of the interfaces, I don't really care if it goes offline uh, because I'll be able to fix it at some other point. This is like fed by some weird, like horrible thing um, of like FFmpeg and Redis and awful stuff. It's gated by Nginx so that I can log in with Twitter when I want to not when I want to play back on it stuff when it's not at home. Um, this line of code is like 80k and it breaks a lot, um, but I'm only breaking it for myself, so it's fine. This is what it looks like. Uh, I wanted to go for a retro theme um, because also for, for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, when you're scrolling through tabs, I want to be able to see it quickly. Uh, and second of all, um, it just feels like, you know, it, I just like the DOS aesthetic. No, nothing really has that anymore. Um, I'll reserve my remaining short amount of time left to like just complaining about data because da metadata tagging is really hard, I'm sure you know. Uh, so I'll just do a rant of things that basically of why Ben should in do track normalization. Uh, simulcasts, simulcasts are very annoying um, because you get two tracks at random different times uh, at the same time. These, this is an easy bug to fix. Uh, the BBC misspell things quite a lot. Uh, the top one is the uh, name <laughs> track name spelled incorrectly, but the artist name spelled right. The middle one is right in all cases. And the bottom one is the, track, the artist spelled incorrectly. My favorite one as well is to go and find uh, the word embargo. Uh, it appears that some producers will try and enter their name into the system uh, to stop other DJs from playing it as, you know, target embargo, which is the name of the DJ, a date, do not play. Um, but that somehow leaks out into this BBC API I'm using, which I think is kind of funny. Um, you also have things which I'm pretty sure were just designed to try and troll me, including this fantastic name of gun emoji, Uzi gun emoji. Um, I don't really know what that's about. Uh, I don't know how to say that artist. Um, <laughs> that equals seven. Um, this is an incredible name for a track up there, uh, and it's incredibly BBC Six Music. Um, and I don't even know where to go for this one. I, when I first saw that pop up on the, it also does like Chrome notifications. When I saw that pop up, I thought that uh, genuinely I'd like ingested something incorrectly, but the BBC website reflected that too. And actually not only, not only did that happen, they also had like a small note on the side being like, this is probably this person. So um, here's a like, small rant list of the things that I did wrong in the meantime. Um, I, ran, and I ran without NTP for six months, massive mistake. Luckily, uh, DVB has time codes in it, so I was able to recover from that. Um, the rest, I'm sure you can just find on the stream because I don't really have enough time. So questions? <laughs> Any questions? Um, you talked about the audio quality. Um, is it something that you can that, that you, see, you you hear by listening to it, or do you there, is there some objective metric to to know that the audio quality is bad? For the 160 kilobyte kilobits MP2 streams, it is painfully listenable. You can definitely tell. So is that possibly because their encoder is so bad? Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, I, I mean, based on what I've seen so far, but the rest of the presentation is probably just a terrible encoder. Okay, thanks. Uh, 
as somebody who spent his whole life looking for lost TV, can I just say, fantastic, fair play to you, mate. <laughs> Great to see you, see people finding solutions to things, you know, just to stop the past from being, well, the present being being lost, basically, to the past, so... Fair play. Well In done. small comments of things being lost, uh, I have nobody who is willing to take a, a mirror of this. Uh, I went, reached out to a couple of people who said that apparently, um, who another provider, who a name provider, who was happy to take the full uh, video feed from me for other services, but said that for some reason audio was too much data for them. So if anyone wants to go and mirror these talk things, to, talk to us, mate. I'm from Kaleidoscope. Who are talk, you? To, talk to me, Chris Perry from okay. Kaleidoscope. Cool. It's what we you. do. We keep the past. Uh, Thanks for the talk. Um, I'm not too familiar with like off-stream dumping uh, off, off, sorry, sorry, um, off the air recordings uh, digitally. But I received some recordings by others, and they had midstream changes off codecs and stuff. Do you ever encounter issues like this? Yeah, so actually DAB has this great, I mean, it sort of makes sense for DAB, especially the BBC use it liberally. Uh, DAB has the ability to basically rearrange the channel, like the code, the entire plan of the system uh, dynamically, um, which I guess now that I've seen a lot of these talks makes complete sense. Uh, but when I first encountered it was a serious uh, WTF moment. Um, especially my favorite is when the BBC DAB system grows a station and for like specific football games. And then when that football game is over, suddenly the station disappears, and this is supposed to be handled in DAB radios just fine. Um, for my system, it blew it up pretty hard. Um, so that was a surprise. I, I think they do also have the ability to change the bit rate of the codecs. Um, yeah. So yeah, you do see it. But for the case of the BBC, it's really rare for me, uh, because I'm using DVB, not DAB, in, in the UK, because it's just easier. Um, so I don't actually get that on DA DVB, but I do get it on DAB. All right, thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, have you thought about trying to archive uh, DRM, so the equivalent digital version of AM, and a few other, well, any form of radio radio signal? And would you have any thoughts about like trying to store all of broadcast, like store? All, I have a personal plan to store all of satellite on all satellites in the sky. And one day the encryption will be broken, and so I'll get all the that as well. Have you, th have you done any thoughts about that? Everyone is laughing at this, but I would love to do this. this I just what, never had the no, disk this space is what to do it. Various agencies down the road have done, <laughs> for example. I would love to. So one of the plans I wanted to do was to try this with pirate radio um, and just find roof space somewhere. Unfortunately, roof space is extremely expensive uh, for places that also happen to have internet. Um, so I've not really have a I have a solution to do it on SDRs, but I don't actually have the physical location to do it. And also, disk space is really expensive.